Hey guys, it's Roth the Gold, and welcome to my very first Loot Crate unboxing for this channel. All of them so far have been on just the Rock the Golem channel. Now I'm actually going to have them on the RTG Gaming one, because that's more, like I said before, the geekier side of what I'm trying to do, and the voice acting stuff will just stay on Rock the Golem itself. So this video is actually a little special, for a couple different reasons. First, like I said, this is the first unboxing for this channel. Second, there's actually going to be two unboxings this time around because I got two loot crates at once. I got the horror loot crate for uh, October, and I also got a Firefly cargo crate. Both of them came at the exact same time. The only thing is I don't know which cargo crate this one is. The one for Wash got delayed. I don't know if it was because they didn't have enough or if there was just something wrong with the process or whatever, but that one ended up getting delayed and I hadn't gotten it just yet. So I knew that one was coming, but I also knew that the next one up after him was one that focused just on Serenity itself, like the ship. And this cargo crate box is actually decently big compared to some of the other ones that I've gotten. So crossing my fingers that I may have gotten one of like those super crates, I highly doubt it because I don't, I, like, I've never seen one before still in the box, so I don't know if they come package differently but this one just looks big so i'm assuming that maybe it's not the wash one it might be the serenity one but if i do happen to get one of those like increased value super crates that'd be awesome especially because the third reason why this video is so special is not only am i recording this but i'm also posting this on my actual birthday not only because am i the one paying for these crates but also the ones benefiting from them it's like it's my birthday gift to me uh yeah kind of like that <laughs> So anywho, let's jump right into the horror loot crate and see what we got this month. I can already see from the box, if uh, I can get it on camera, you can see the, the outline here. There's like a face and there's an eye right here next to the label. Ignore the uh, personal information, please. I don't have to blur that out. <laughs> um, but as you can see, ooh, very nice. Oh, I can already tell from the box. There, It, it is a, uh, The Walking Dead, and it's kind of hard to tell, zombie mask. Uh, I've already showed you some of the loot, but we'll get into it in more detail. Taking everything out once at a time like we usually do. And we will begin, as we do, with the apparel. Okay, this is pretty awesome. For those of you who are a fan of The Walking Dead, first up is a Negan Sluggers t-shirt. And he's got his bat with the, the barbed wire over it and everything. Can you guys see that? Oh yeah, let's uh, move that back in the camera a bit. Um, that's pretty awesome. I cannot wait to wear... Oop. I'm sorry, microphone, I didn't mean to. Um, I cannot wait to wear this t-shirt. This thing is awesome. Uh, Negan has already turned out to be one of my favorite characters. Now, I don't actually read the comics. I have gone through to see who it was that Negan killed in the comics. Um, I saw that it was Glenn. Spoiler alert for those of you who hadn't read the comics yet. But the comics have been out for a while, so if you haven't read them by now, eh, well, that's your fault. Just like it's mine for not having read through them. I know there's a bunch of differences between the, the, the series and the comic books, you know, Rick hasn't, you know what, I'm not going to put out any more spoilers, I just know that there's enough of a difference that I can safely say that it's not going to be Glenn that dies. Anywho, moving along. Huh, it is, you guys saw this when I held up the, um, the, the box initially, but it's a little plushy leather face from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and he's, he's adorable. If, oh, I wish he came like with a little plushy chainsaw or something, that'd be cool. Uh, he, I like him. What's he from? Funny? P-H-U-N-N-Y? Never heard of them before. I wonder what other stuff that they have. But that's cute. I wonder if I should give this one to my nephew, or should I just hold off? Because that might be a little scary. And again, he probably wouldn't even know. One thing I really like about the design, which I'm not really sure if it was like this in the movie, because the movie was obviously much more realistic, but if you look, he's got like the dual face thing going on. Like, if you see this line right here, he's got like the little, the sad, angry face. But then if you ignore it and you look at like the outline he's got on the mask, he's got like the happy face. So it's the same like up with the eyes and everything. So he's mad, he's happy, depends on how you look at him. He could be like, you know, happy with determination in his eyes or whatever. You could, he's, he's got the whole gambit of emotions just sitting right there without even having to move at all. I, I like this, I really do. <laughs> all right, here's something a little different and something that I actually haven't owned in a very long time. Not this one specifically, but just in general, because I used to have a bunch of these as a kid. A Camp Crystal Lake baseball pennant. This is very nice, actually. Like, it's nice and soft. It, like, the old ones I had, like, felt like they were made out of similar material, but were much more 
um, like they were thicker. They were more. They felt more brittle almost. Um, they had a little more structure to them, but this one actually feels like it would last a little bit longer because it's more pliable. Like it can move around. It could be like crushed. I feel like I could throw this in the wash if it got dirty. Um, but this is actually really nice. It kind of brings me back to when I was a kid. Of course, when I was a kid, I also used to pe put these up on my wall using sticky tack as opposed to the tacks I probably should have used. Um, but then again, I wasn't allowed to put holes in my wall. As you can see, that's kind of changed, but this wasn't my room initially, and I didn't do that. So, yeah. Here's something different. We've actually got a hardcover book, The Legion of Regrettable Supervillains, featuring the 50 strangest supervillains in the history of comics, the Loot Crate Edition. That's actually really cool. Um, I I think this is the first book I've gotten, aside from the, you know, the little magazine ones that come in the Loot Crates. This is actually really cool, especially because, I, as I mentioned before in a previous video, I'm, I love comics, not so much the comic books themselves, but the stories and the characters and things like that. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of comics growing up, but I did do a lot of reading about the characters themselves. So, learning about some of the more obscure ones that maybe I did see but don't really remember, that would be kind of cool to have that little refresher through here. So, I liked it. That's pretty awesome. Alright, next up, this is kind of fun. Um, we have some Freddy Krueger Freddy uh, glove chopsticks. So, you can see like they're kind of attached there by the actual hand. And then two of his fingers come down to actually become metal chopsticks. Just from like kind of playing with it through the packaging, it looks like you can't take them apart. Like uh, traditionally, you would hold chopsticks separately between your fingers. This one looks like it's more like chopsticks for beginners. Like the bottom is actually held together, and all you have to do is worry about pinching, which makes you know sense, especially with the theme of being in the glove and everything. I might end up using these. I'm not sure. They I do like the idea of the metal chopsticks. I feel like they'd be you know, pretty easy to use and easy to clean. Uh, I do have ivory chopsticks, though, or whatever fake ivory uh, those ones are made of, like the, the heavier ones. But I do like these, so that's pretty cool. I don't know if I'll ever use them or not, but I may, or if there's someone who wants to learn how to use chopsticks and I happen to have these on hand. Get it? On hand? That that was horrible, I'm sorry. <laughs> I might just let them use these. That, that would be kind of cool. Or maybe I'll just break them out during Halloween time. Whichever. All right, so last up before we actually get into the box itself is our Halloween Horror Loot Crate pin. Um, this one is actually, let me make sure I can see this so it's coming in focus for you guys, is Mike Myers from Halloween itself right there on the front. Uh, let me put this in focus for you. Focus isn't working. There we go. Um, so it's very much like the, the cover of Mike Myers with the knife and then the knife transitioning into the jack-o'-lantern. So that's kind of cool. But the question always is, what does the pin unlock? So this, according to the site, and I've already had it pulled up, is it unlocks something called Super Fight, a video game of absurd arguments. Um, so here's the description real quick. Uh, Super, Fight pits player, uh, Super Fight pits players against one another in hypothetical battles of real wit. Who would win in a fight between a drunk ninja and Abraham Lincoln riding a bear? Which is the better weapon, an infinite sausage lasso or a skunk on a stick? Grab a microphone, join or create a game with up to four players, build your fighter with character cards and attribute cards, and when it's your turn, it's up to you to make your case for why your fighter would kick ass. So, that's interesting. It almost seems like it's more about you know actually being able to present an argument and dictate why you think the character you've created is the best character as opposed to just creating that character. So I'm actually gonna have to check that out and I might even do it as a let's play on this channel depending on who I come across. If it's one of those things where it's like a random online type thing and you meet some troll, I could be kind of funny. Hmm. Maybe I will give it a shot as my next let's play. Maybe not the next one, but one coming up. We'll see. So I think for the very first time, I'm actually not going to completely reverse my loot crate box. Um, the reason being is because I don't want to make these perforated edges on the bottom any more um, compromised than I feel like they might already be just because they're already there. Um, it does take a little bit of effort to reverse these boxes, so I don't want to mess it up. Uh, but as we mentioned before, let me bring back up my camera so I can make sure I'm showing you guys this, there is a mask 
on the bottom. Uh, you saw the top first. It's, you know, Negan standing in front of the whole crew. But on the bottom where all the loot was is a zombie mask. Um, so basically you'd punch him out, you'd push out the eyes, and it came with a little string with two tabs um, that you can put on there to actually wear. Um, you got to remember, though, it is just a, a cardboard mask. And yeah, these things are decently thick. They do have to hold loot and be able to ship them safely and whatnot. Um, but it is just a cardboard mask. I got a huge noggin, and this little string is not going to go very far with me. So let's see. Like, there are the two ends right there, round my head. Um, those barely touch my temples on either side. Um, and they're expecting me to wear a mask in front of my face, and then even... Oh, this actually... Wow, this stretches decently far. It actually goes all the way around my head. Um, but the problem is that there's so much tension on this at that point that it would pull the mask back and, like, contour to my face, and the whole thing would be ruined inside of, like, five minutes. So I don't want to do that. I want to be able to store these things until I have a place to properly put everything. So for the time being, this is the one uh, loot crate that I will not be flipping inside out. I got to do it that way. I'm, I'm sorry if you guys were expecting it, but I can't. Not at least right now. Maybe next Halloween if I've got my place set up properly and actually have a place to set everything up properly. Oh, well, what can you do? I know. Let's move on to the Firefly cargo crate. What? You guys don't need the song. You knew it was coming. You should have. All 12 of you. So, as I mentioned before, this thing is actually pretty darn big, uh, which is why I have a feeling it may be geared more toward the Serenity cargo crate as opposed to the Wash one. However, I could be wrong. For all I know, the Serenity one could be the tiniest loot crate I've ever received. And size-wise, actually, that uh, horror crate is the tiniest loot crate I've ever received. But there's only one way to find out what's actually in it, so let's check it out. Okay, I definitely am corrected by this crate. This is actually the wash crate. Um, so I'm happy that it finally showed up. That means that hopefully soon the Serenity one will be here. But this is a very large crate, and we're about to find out why. So first up is a very nice and very potent smelling shirt, as if though it was just screened very recently. Uh, we have the many faces of wash while flying Serenity. Um, that's kind of cool. I've, I've seen these little memes before with, like, anime characters and stuff. So we've got nine different faces. Let's see, we've got, we've got, okay, we've got flabbergasted, flabbergasted, uh, terrified, angry, concentrating, tired, confused, blank, and relieved, in that order. Uh, can you guys see this? Can I see if you guys can see this? Yes. So that is a very nice shirt. This one also seems much thicker than some of the ones that I've gotten. Uh, most of the shirts I've, I've been getting, especially that Negan one, has been very thin. This one actually seems like it's a decent thickness. So, a mm, little bit warmer, maybe a little better quality. I don't know. I haven't worn any of them yet. I'm still not down to that size, but still working on it. All right, so next up is uh, an interplanetary flashcard set. Um, what actually are you guys? So, we've got Persephone, numbers 36, White Sun System, Higgins Moon, Hera, Beaumont, and a cardboard, piece of cardboard, just to keep them all sturdy. That's kind of cool. So we got Persephone here on the front, and then on the back, all the information you could ever want to know about Persephone, and probably a little bit more. So that's kind of cool. So we've got our Beaumont, uh, rather uh, exported from Beaumont uh, sticker, which is also on the side of the crate. So we can add that to the sticker collection. Next up is the Fire 5... Firefly Flux Saffron Expansion. Now, I know Flux is a card game that's based off of Firefly, and I haven't played it. Um, don't know if I will. I actually don't know anyone in the area that owns it, so I wouldn't be able to try it out with them. But I do have the Saffron Expansion, which I guess normally would have cost $2. Uh, four new cards from the year 2517, Looney Labs. So because I don't know how the game works and I've never played it, I'm actually not going to open these just yet to see what else is in the expansion. Um, but the fact that it's saffron is pretty cool. So next is the pin that comes with this one. And it is one of Wash himself saying, I am a leaf on the wind. Uh, one of the best scenes from the entire Firefly franchise. Not only was it one of the most surprising character deaths that I've seen, 
It also ended up leading to the joke of how do Reavers keep their spears clean? They run them through the wash. <sighs> Poor kid. All right, moving on. Up next is our Wash QM Masters figurine. I believe this happened with our last one too. It was already assembled. So that's kind of cool. We've got Wash and he's playing with his little dinosaurs that he has on the console. We actually, this is our first encounter with him is seeing him play with these things. So I like the fact that these are already assembled, but I'm kind of sad. They didn't have one of the little mini ones. I was hoping to get the whole collection. But hey, I know I'll be getting all of these. All right, so this is kind of funny. This is, uh, it basically, it's along the lines of those uh, doorknob hangers that you would get at a hotel. So on one side, where it would be, you know, you know, room service or come in or whatever, uh, we've got Nathan Fillion uh, with Play With Me. And then on the other side, we've got the equivalent of Do Not Disturb with Alan Tudyk and Quarantine. As you can see, they're both in their plain clothes with their little, you know, convention passes around their neck. It's actually them as, like, their, their actors. It's not Captain Reynolds and it's not Wash. It's actually Nathan and Alan. So that's kind of funny. I would be very interested in seeing if someone actually ever used these at a convention. But it looks like there's also an app game for it. Uh, con oh, Con Man the Game. So I guess it's like going to conventions and things like that. So uh, that is currently available on the uh, Apple App Store and on Google Play. So check it out if you want to. I probably end up will end up doing so at the end of this unboxing. So I feel like I have most definitely saved the best for last on this one. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to show it to you guys. The... QMX, the guys that do the little figurines of all the characters, have also included the Inevitable Betrayal set. Uh, it's actually the dinosaurs that Wash plays with on his console that we see him playing with in his figurine. Let's pop this bad boy open and see what these get things are like. Oh my god, this is pretty cool. Uh, so we've got our palm trees in the middle, we've got our T-Rex, and we've got our... Uh, my five-year-old self hates me. I can't remember what that one is. Stegosaurus. Took me a minute. I kept thinking... I, Stegosaurus was in my head, but I kept thinking it was something else, but that it's the same thing. Oh, that's kind of cool. I'm not taking these out yet, because I'm not going to play with them. Um, but I have a feeling that when I do have my, my geek room set up, that these actually will not be on camera, because they'll be up over my monitors, so it could be like my own dashboard inside of Serenity. But that is awesome. And now we know why the cargo crate was as big as it was. So that's going to do it for these unboxings, guys. I appreciate you all stopping by and checking out the new channel. Hopefully you're going to enjoy your time here. If you don't, let me know what you feel could change and I can make it better for you. Uh, I do want to give some attention back to the voice acting channel as well. And I've got a couple of ideas of how to do that. I just don't have the time currently. Um, I've been doing a lot of investigation about moving down to Texas. Um, and I actually just came back from spending a week down there. So I got to play catch up with this channel as well, but it's much easier to do work for this channel than it is to do for the other one. Uh, but I will be bringing material to you guys in the future. I can't say when exactly, but just know it is on the way. It will be coming. So hang in there. All right, guys, thank you all very much for watching. If you liked what you've seen and heard, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And having said all that, I will see you all on the other side. Take care.